See you soon. Yes, it has now been one year since Oregon reported its first case of COVID-19 and so much has changed since then, but we continue to make strides to put an end to the pandemic. So for the final day of February, the Oregon Health Authority reported just 292 new cases. You can see on this chart that cases have been trending downward steadily since that first case last year. The total number of known infections in the state has risen to more than 155,000. No additional deaths were reported yesterday, but the state death toll remains at 2,208. There is now a third vaccine in the fight against COVID-19. Over the weekend, the FDA approved the Johnson & Johnson shot for emergency use. It only requires one dose and can be stored in a regular refrigerator. Johnson & Johnson says its vaccine is 67% effective in protecting you from the virus, but it's 85% effective in stopping severe cases. The FDA also said the shot is effective against all variants. Well, today, Oregonians 65 and older become eligible for the vaccine. That adds 258,000 people to the vaccine eligibility pool, and 1,900 new appointment slots will open up this morning for the vaccination site at the Oregon Convention Center. But there is a big change in the scheduling system this week for the metro area. It's a uh, don't call us, we'll call you type of setup. The Oregon Health Authority has already sent organizers at the Convention Center the names of 1,900 people who qualify, and those people will get a phone call to set up their appointment. So what we're going to do now is use the call center to call the individuals on the list that we get, and we're gonna make that appointment for them, and then, and then they'll have their place um, uh, uh, on the schedule and their day that they can come in and get vaccinated. Last Thursday, more than 400,000 people went online to try and reserve a slot at the convention center, but there were only 500 available appointments, so it was basically a disaster. Different scenario, though, in play for the OHSU drive through clinic at PDX. They'll have 2,400 appointments available at the airport, and you can use the OHSU website to try and get one of those uh, spots starting today at 9 a.m. Still sounds confusing, right? Well, while a lot of our focus is on the vaccine right now, turns out children aren't getting other vaccines needed to prevent dangerous illnesses. Galen Etland reports. All age groups are taking a hit. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, childhood vaccinations have gone way down. Dr. Jasmine Zavala is an adolescent medicine physician. She looked at Washington Department of Health data from the beginning of the pandemic to September 2020. Overall, childhood vaccinations were down nearly 20 percent. Ages 11 to 17 were the most impacted, with nearly a 40 percent drop. We totally understand that parents may be hesitant to come into clinics. Concerns over COVID-19 are stopping many parents from taking kids to checkups. Remote learning also means parents are not being reminded to update vaccination records. These vaccines are required for school and sports participation. Oregon released similar data last May, with most clinics surveyed saying they changed immunization practices. 65% reduced or limited well-child visits, and half canceled or rescheduled shots for older kids and adolescents. Even back then, Dr. Paul Sieslak with Oregon Health Authority said, don't wait. It is okay to go to your doctor to get immunizations. You have to keep taking care of yourself because we don't want to have another pandemic on top of the pandemic. Dr. Drew Oliveira is an executive medical director at Regents who spoke with us in December about people putting off doctor visits. Now, people, for the most part, are being told to stay home to avoid exposure. What is the balance there? The medical community has really stepped up. So they have protocols in place. They have ways to get you in and out of the practice in a safe way. The danger of falling behind on child immunizations is real with serious diseases like meningitis, chickenpox, and measles. Washington's Department of Health said adding more outbreaks on top of COVID-19 not only puts more people's health at risk, it also could overload the healthcare system. We know that these vaccines are just super important to prevent outbreaks like that from happening so we can prevent serious consequences down the line. So if you're concerned about a visit to your child's doctor, give them a call to talk it through. Galen Etlin, KGW News.
Let's get to three more things to know about COVID right now. Number one, the Oregon Health Authority and the Department of Education have created a new dashboard for parents and students. Families can see where their school stands when it comes to returning to in-person learning. The interactive site includes more than 1,500 schools. You can find a link this morning at the bottom of your screen or on the OHA Twitter page. Number two, Washington says its mass vaccination sites have given out more than 70,000 COVID shots. The Ridgefield site at the Clark County Fairgrounds has administered more than 18,000. That site will continue giving second doses starting Tuesday at 9 a.m. And number three, a new way to keep sports fans a little safer in stadiums. An Italian soccer club is testing this out. The team gave 300 fans devices that monitor social distancing. Get too close to somebody else and you get an alert. That same signal also goes out to staff at the venue. The gadget even helps with contact tracing in the stadium. And those are three things to know about COVID right now. In Washington, D.C., the House passed the Biden administration's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package over the weekend. So now that package makes its way to the Senate. Let's talk about what's actually in the package right now, the bill. We have more financial aid for small businesses, more money for vaccine distribution, $1,400 stimulus payments to most Americans, also an increase in the child tax credit and extended unemployment benefits. Meanwhile, back here in Oregon, there is a beer tax proposal on the table, Nina, and some local brewers say if it passes, it could put them out of business. Right, but supporters say uh, increased tax on beer and wine will help with addiction services. Oregon Recovers, an addiction and recovery advocacy group, has been working on this bill for over three years. So it would add a tax increase to each beer or wine barrel produced and sold. The money would go into a statewide fund that would require counties to increase the amount of recovery options available. Probably 1,200 residential treatment beds around the, scattered around the state between the 36 counties, another 1,200 detox beds, I think 3,000 outpatient slots, all will be created in addition to what we currently have. The increased costs will most likely be passed on to you, the consumer. But the bill has a long ways to go before it passes or not. It wouldn't take effect until next January 2022. A break for Washington businesses that sell alcohol. Washington Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill into law waiving liquor license fees. This includes small shops, restaurants, breweries and wineries that sometimes pay more than $2,000 a year in fees. The waivers will take effect in April. A lot of people still talking about that great weather he had yesterday. Sunny weather brought a lot of people out and about. We saw that on Northwest 23rd and Northwest Portland yesterday afternoon. People we talked to said conditions were absolutely perfect for eating outside. And a lot of those people had the same idea to hit up salt and straw for a little ice cream. You know, there's been some down days with all the rain and, the, and even the snow coming through here a couple weeks ago. Uh, to come outside here and actually enjoy and see the sun feels like it normally will in Portland. It's like Mother Nature knew we were ready to wrap up February and enter March. Today is March 1st, so there's